Vistilar, addressing the entire spectrum of human conflict. Okay, um, good morning. Uh, my name is Kevin Scholes. I'm the president of Vistilar. And today, uh, you're all in attendance for a two-hour verbal defense sure. and influence training yeah. seminar that we're gonna do. We're also gonna make available a certificate of training hours for today's uh, session as well. Um, so what this is, is, this is more of a highlight of our program. Um, the training that we do breaks down in, a different, in, in many different uh, ways. Uh, we have a, a four-hour workshop, an eight-hour workshop. We do two and three-day practitioner certification courses and four and five-day instructor certification courses as well. So today's just more of a highlight, okay? Um, and before I turn it over to Gary, there's just a couple of logistical things I wanted to go over. Uh, we have beverages, soda, water, coffee over here. The bathrooms are straight down the hallway here to the right. All right, if you need to take a call, you know, feel free to go out in the hallway. And um, so Gary's gonna go for about 55 minutes till about 11.30. Uh, we're gonna take about a 10 minute break, and he's gonna come back and we're gonna go for about another 40 minutes, okay? Um, and then at 11.20, or, or I'm sorry, 12.20, we're, I'm, we're going to turn over to Digital Alley, who's a sponsor of this train, for 10 minutes. Then we're going to end promptly, and no later than 12.30, and then we're going to have lunch. We have cousin subs that are coming in, and uh, it gives you an opportunity to mingle amongst yourselves, talk to us, uh, etc. So uh, we do have a form that I'm going to pass out during the break uh, that we kindly ask you to complete. It's got your contact details and just some, some questions that we're going to ask you. And, we, and this is a form that we do need in order for us to send you a, uh, a certificate of training hours for, for today. So we'll be passing that out during the break. And I'd like to thank Digital Alley for sponsoring, uh, assisting us in sponsoring this seminar for you today. And without further ado, Gary Kluglis. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Gary Klugwitz. I'm the director of training for Verbal Defense and Influence, and I, I'll be your, your presenter for the next uh, you know, hour and a half. It'll be an interactive session, and I, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about the whole issue of how to look good on camera. And again, it's something you, we'll talk much more about. It's, it's been in the news, obviously, and on, on the internet. Well, but I have a question for you here. Are you ready to learn how to communicate better? Is that what we're here for? Okay, well, let's, let's talk about that. And again, I'd like to share at the outset that we, as police officers, we communicate well already. We want to learn how to do that better. We want to learn about some of our mistakes, and we want to enhance our program. So that's what the program's all about. Now, the, uh, there's a notification that we always put up, and I ask you just to read it. And again, I'm going to ask your permission to, that in this class, you will not only see on video, but you also hear some harsh language. Not directed at you, but as part of the presentation. Is that okay with everybody? You know, I mean, I mean, I mean you know, this, you know, we, we do all kinds of different groups, and sometimes it's not okay. <laughs> but, but, but the point of the matter is, is, that, is that this is what it's all about. It's about conflict. And we're going to have people using harsh words. We're going to be people saying things that try to get you angry. We're going to have saying things that, because they're angry. And so we want to be able to handle that. Now, to show you how why this is so important, is that we're going to start out... We're going to start out with uh, talking about what's in the news today. <laughs> uh, my wife told me about this one. It just got in the news today. I didn't even see it. My wife said, Gary, you have to watch this. Last, mil last night it had a million hits. This morning it has four million hits. Please turn it <laughs> The video's turned out here. They just turn up the one when it's done. Okay. Well, it goes downhill from here. Uh, we have guns drawn, we have uh, you know, you know, more profanities, but the whole point is, don't care what's happening, this is viral. This could be your agency. It's going viral, four million hits. 
Nothing really bad happened. I mean, in terms of really bad things happening. Nobody got shot, nobody got hurt badly. But did we look good on camera? That's the real question we have to ask about ourselves. Whoa, that's good. That's always good the first thing this full program goes on. Yes, deal. See, this is why you're bringing IT people. Okay, now, what we're gonna be talking about here, very simply, is that, is that and again, as soon as the, the video goes back up, it's going to, it's, it's, we're gonna show you a picture of a, a plane landing safely. Do you see that often in the media? Oh, you know, on the front page of the paper, a plane landing safely? No, you see them crashing. And again, how many planes crash versus how many planes land safely? Hundreds of thousands? Every day in the United States, we have 100,000 police contacts. Many of them go very well. Some go badly. We see those on the internet. The whole point here, in terms of this, is that we have to, have to, have to understand this is a major problem that we want, to, we, want, we want to be able to address and answer to, very simply, of what's going on and why it's happening. Now, I, I have a question I'm going to ask you. And this is very simply, if you just could, uh, everybody take a, pass the cards down at the end of the table, just take a card. Is it? Password. I don't remember yours anymore. Sorry about that. Oh. Okay, and it's a, it's a question we're gonna ask all of you. And what do you think verbal defense and influence is? This is a presentation on verbal defense and influence, and we're asking you this, and what we want you to do is we're gonna ask you to do a, a little interactive activity, because we're all about activities. So we want, you know, we want to have, have asked somebody you don't know, so look to the people behind you or whatever, because we're gonna ask somebody you don't know, we, you know, we're gonna ask them this question. You just heard my universal greeting that I, I just gave. Good morning, my name is Gary Klugowitz. I'm the Director of Training for Verbal Defense and Influence. The reason I'm here is to do a presentation. Are you ready to learn about communication? That's a universal greeting. Now for the police officers here, you understand a car stop, don't you? Good morning, my name is Deputy Klugowitz, Mark County Sheriff. The reason I stopped you is you're going 65 in a 40 mile zone. Is there any reason you're going that fast? We want to start doing more and more what we call universal greetings for good, conflict, good, good contacts and bad contacts, whether it's in my civilian life or my police life, my professional life. I want to be able to do that. Now, in order, in order so, we, so we actually want you to ask this question of someone. So we want to do a universal greeting. Let me pull, pull it up here. What's your file called? Do you know the light? Looking good, yep. Just open it up and get down, get down to about five slides. Okay. That's the plane land safely. Let's just stop for a second. What's really interesting here is that in, in, our, in, our, in our system now, of Verbal Defense and Influence, Verbal Vistalar, we're in 14 different disciplines. And what we want to do here is ask you this question. What is Verbal Defense and Influence to you? We want you to ask your part, a partner this question. Let me go up a little higher, we can see the so you can see. We're gonna ask this question. This is what an appropriate uh, uh, universal greeting looks like. We want them to ask this question, and I'm gonna do it for you. Good morning, I'm Gary Klugowitz from Verbal Defense and Influence. I've been asked to inquire what you think Verbal Defense and Influence class is, all, is going to cover. Could I ask your name, organization, and what your class is going to cover? Okay, pretty simple. Now, we then want you to take that information down, that's why we have the card, to put down to your, the person you don't know's name, wh where they're from, and then, to then uh, what they think verbal defense is gonna be all about. So let's, let's all just go back here, and let's turn, find a partner you don't know, and turn to them and ask them the question. Did I thank you later? Lately, how much I appreciate you? I don't know what I don't, I don't know what happened. Yeah, we'll see if it has, that hasn't happened before. No. I might have just been the video. Maybe a bunch of other stuff was up, but I think we should be okay now. I'll, okay. I'll run down. And
One of the big things we do is everything is interactive. If we want people to talk, they got to be talking. Mm -hmm. And so we make them talk. And if they get nothing from this class, if we get everybody in America, both the citizen and a police officer, to start using a universal greeting, think how much more pleasant it would be. Good morning. My name is Gary Klugwitz. I'm on my way to work. How am I help you, officer? <laughs> Versus... <laughs> Okay, we'll go back and forth. Let's get that information. Get that information. Yeah. Now, once you get that information, we're going to introduce our partner. Treating people with Okay, let's come back together. Let's come back together. Okay, now what I'd like you to do is introduce your partner now knowing what they think it is. I want you to introduce your partner to somebody else. First of all, I want you to introduce yourself. Then introduce your partner and what they believe it is. So get a third person and let's just get together. Just find a third person, turn around, here you go, turn around here. Okay, okay, introduce him. Okay, cool. Okay, catch him up. Yep, very good. We'll do. Just tell a third person who you met. Nope. No, no, are we going to? Um, Hello. Hello. Gary Glugwitz. How are you? Ivan. Okay. I'm 12. Pleasure Ex to meet you. Excellent. I know you. Nice to see you. Hello. Excellent. We're just starting a presentation, and then we'll be going for about until 15 minutes, and we'll take a break. And if you want to ask them there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. And then maybe there are a couple of officers or something we can talk. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's come back together. <laughs> okay, can we come back together? Now, because we only have an hour and a half, this is a little rushed. But I mean, I, but I wanted to show you: isn't this what we want to do in uh, every day in our job assignments? Have normal conversations with people. And I'm going to share with you that the best way to start that out is by saying something like, Good morning. My name is Gary Klugwitz, who I represent, the reason I'm here, and ask you a relevant question like, How may I help you? If I want to start good conversations, that's what I have to do. So if you take nothing more from this class than that, that's a huge thing. What we want to do is we want to practice non-escalation, not de-escalation. We have to de-escalate, we got that. But wouldn't it be nice to have non-escalation? Now, 
There are four great American questions that people ask. Why, who are you, who do you represent, and what's in it for me? Those are questions that Americans ask. Okay, and we're going to answer them one at a time. But I want to share with you that don't worry, conflict is just not a police thing. We, we, we train what we call contact professionals. And in contact professionals, what we, what we like to, to show is that a lot of people lose it. And we want to, have, we want to avoid this no matter who you work for. Stop the bus right now. Stop the bus. Can you transfer? I'm not giving you a damn transfer. Where's your fucking house? Shit! You do it when you get on. Damn! People get on my damn nerves. I do like the damn nerves. <laughs> All the people do. Who's all you motherfucking people? Oh, that's yeah. Wait a minute now. Who's all you motherfucking people? Who's all you motherfuckers? You understand me? You understand me? Would we all agree? Do you see why I had that notification up early? <laughs> you know. Okay. Do you see? We had it up early because very simply is that is that everybody has conflict. There's conflict everywhere. You know. So how are we going to deal with the conflict that can exist wherever we work, whether on whether we're working, whether in our personal lives, in our home life, in our organizational life? There's going to be conflict. So very simply, what we want to do. is start dealing with the issues. Okay, we're gonna answer these questions for you. Why should you take this class? Who are we? Who do we represent, meaning where we got authority from? And what's in it for you? So the why is pretty simple. You know, our why has to do all about safety. Would you not agree everybody wants to be safe? Now some of you, you know, you know, some of your people you deal with, you have clerical staff that work for you, you have all kinds of people, not all in, in, in law enforcement, but everybody wants to be safe. So let's talk about four ways of being safe. Do we all want to be safe physically? You know, I mean, in, 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 in our work life, in our personal life, do we want our families to be safe? Is physical safety a big issue? Okay, number two, organizational safety. Do you think this guy who's already been, uh, he's already uh, been put on leave, the one we watched the first video, do you think he's gonna have some organizational problems? When you, when you, when you, when you get four million people watch you on the internet? And now, could it also impact longevity on the job? Being promoted, time off, okay? You know, so we wanna be organizationally safe. Verbalization skills help you do that. We want to be legally safe, meaning very simply, in our day and age, in public safety, can you get in trouble criminally? You touch somebody who's not appropriate, is that a criminal charge? Once that it's over, do you have civil charges? Now, when that gets over, because you're operating under color of law, do we have, do we have federal civil rights violations? So is legal safety kind of important? And what about your emotional safety? You think if you have, been, if you have four million YouTube hits on you today, you're going to be emotionally safe? Talk about longevity, in police and work, we die at 59. 15 years ahead of everybody else. There's a reason for that, it's not only lifestyle, it's the stress of the job, we wanna reduce stress. So those are things you wanna be safe, so that's why you wanna take this class. Now, if you're working for an organization, they have different reasons, you know, we're talking about good public relations, you don't have lawsuits, you know, you have, you have, you have, you have, you have all these other issues, but the point of the matter is, it's still all about safety. Second question, who am I? My background, many of you know me, I'm from Wisconsin. I, I started as a martial arts. I was a knockdown fighter, not a lot of verbalization going on there. Okay, retired captain from Mark County Sheriff's Office. Very in influential in the development of POSC and DAT for the state of Wisconsin, which are defensive tactics programs. And, you know, the, the, you know the, I'm a street survival instructor. I ran a special management unit for seven years. 350 people on psychotropic meds in our Mark County Jail. Do I understand mental health issues? Okay, I was Dr. Thompson's protege. Okay, and now people, people who don't know remember Dr. Thompson, he's the one who developed verbal judo. I started working out with, with Doc Thompson in 2003, you know, you know in, in, ter in terms of this, and then, you know, in, in 2014, I started following him around the country. I was his protege. He's very well known for verbal judo. You know, you know he's one of the people that helped, helped put our program together. But again, he also, one of the things I did with Dr. Thompson is I was also one of his 
compilers of his peace stories. We do a lot of peace stories, not so many war stories. We got enough of those. These are peace stories. And this is one of the ones he tells about the importance of our police community relations. What's it all about? Despite the great cops we have that I've Turn off. Everything I teach you put it on, the reality still remains, I think, that is unarguable, and that is we are most hated where we're most needed. See, we're really not needed in Country Club, Ann Arbor. Right? We're really needed in the projects where people bar their windows, are afraid to go out on the streets at night. And yet, in too many places, there's a huge gap between the community and the police. And of course, a lot of cops say, well, I don't care about that, you know, it's us versus them. I care about it because the gap, you know what I call the gap? What it is, playground for the crook. The wider the gap, the more free the crook is to buy his trade, because nobody will call in and nobody will back the officer up. Now, you know what? Officers need to change their attitude towards the people they work best with, or that I'm fed who best need them. And I think the way to do it is to understand reality. And here's how you understand reality. Walk a beat some night in the toughest projects in America with perhaps a defective radio and little or no matter. And if you did that, you'd discover what I know. In the worst crime-filled communities in America, there is a 90-10 principle. 90% of the people, or more, and I think it's more, if you think about it, in those communities, are really good, hard-working, decent folk trying to grind out a living in quiet best place and they're taking everyone up finger hand out. Often under arduous conditions. Conditions of poverty. That's mama with uh, six children and no husband. That's a man with no wife and four kids to raise and having two or three jobs, most of which are menial jobs and jobs that numb the mind. But they're not criminals and they're not out shooting people or raping people. 90% of the people are good, hard work, and decent people. 10%, if you think about it, are the bad guys. They're the wolves. They're the guys that need to be taken off the streets permanently. They are the murderers, the rapists, the drug dealing scum, the people that want to take advantage of other people. Now, the problem with being a cop, right? You know this, is that 90% of our work tends to be with those 10%. So it quickly creates that negative mindset. And these people out here, particularly at night, but these people in general, uh, are all assholes. And, uh, and we go into communities <laughs> aggressively rather than assertively. Right? We've got to be more assertive. We should think about those communities in this way. They need our help. Thank God we are there to help them. We are the sheepdog protecting the sheep, those trying to do it right. Right? And we do it because we want to do it. We are protectors. If you look up the word warrior, its root word is protector. We are there to protect the innocent, the young, and yes, even the guilty. We are there to protect people from themselves and each other. And our, our business really is to think for people as they might think of themselves under better conditions. That's what we do. That's what we're called. We are peace officers. We extend the olive branch of peace. We hold the arrows of war ready. Bottom line is, if you could just remember that 90% of those people need us, and if we treated them with dignity and respect at all times, that's the number one universal principle I know. If we could treat the people in the projects and in the rough areas with dignity and respect, if we ever got their backing, God help the crook. See, the moment we get those 90% to believe they can trust us, the crook's done. You bring that gap back, Guess who's in the middle? That's right, the guy we want. Okay? So think about it. Know the 9010, believe in the 9010. And by the way, it will help you from burning out. If you don't know the 9010 and don't believe in the 9010, you will burn out. It will take a year or two. So use it to keep your own sanity. 
And Dr. Thompson, uh, you know, was uh, one of my mentors. He's one of the mentors of our program. We have many that have helped develop this program. But the bottom line is this, is that, is that we need to understand that in our communities, the rougher it is, the more important it is that we act right. And we're going to talk a lot about this idea of treating people with dignity and showing them respect. I was also heavily involved in the, police, uh, the professional communication skills program. I uh, was police one and, and corrections one contributor. I'm a member of the Forest Science, uh, uh, I'm a board member there and a researcher, and I'm the director of VDI. But if you look at our program, if you look at our program, Our program. It started in, 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 in Aristotle. He started to talk about persuasion, and we're just talking about how to do that now in modern times. In 1980s, we started doing a lot of training. In the state of Wisconsin, we developed what was called the RISC program. It later became the DAT program. We did a lot of training in this area. Uh, you know, in, in, uh, in, we, we focus on this. Daniel Vega was one of our first mentors in the state of Wisconsin, helped develop our, our programming for verbalization skills. After 2000, uh, 2001, we developed a flight uh, attendant program. We actually formed a company, Vistlar, in 2006. We expanded beyond uh, you know, law enforcement, we're now in 14 different disciplines. And we, we address the entire spectrum of human conflict. We have over 30 consultants and advisors. That's who we are. Now, what's interesting here is that, you know, in terms of in 2010, Dr. Thompson joined the Vistlar Group. 2011, unfortunately, he died. And so we now our own company. We do our own thing. Now, here's the important question, the fourth great American question. What's in it for me? Let's say I address them one at a time. Let me ask this question. Do you want to look good no matter where this incident turns, uh, ends up? Is that true? Do you want to look good? Now, is it true that sometimes we have bad outcomes? You know, sometimes they aren't good outcomes, you know, and it's, people make bad choices. We're not responsible totally for the outcome. We're responsible for the process, how we get there. Do you want to learn how to look good? Now, you look good, but you, you, you look good because you have, you have to learn how to choreograph your communication. Have any of you ever had to have a do-over? You wish I could have a do-over, just do this one over? You know, in our personal life, in our, in our, in our professional life, a do-over? Well, this program is made up of hundreds of do-overs. We've learned what's the best way to communicate, commu uh, communicate you know, under pressure. And now, finally, the third one is important, too. Do you want to learn how to communicate concern in your conversations? And people look, huh? If people don't believe you care about them, are they going to do what you want them to do? So you, I, you know, I talk about, about, about personal level, we're talking about a professional level. They have to believe you care about them, whether I'm a nurse, whether I'm a teacher, whether I'm a police officer. Now, because of that, we have some foundations that we follow. The first one we have is a social contract concept. You know, you know we always ask this question, what's a social contract? And most people stumble on this, but really, isn't it an agreement between people how we're going to behave? Is that what a social contract is? Now, given this idea, is that we want to develop a different social contract between us and the community. That we're, we, we're, we have a caring watch of each other. We follow each other. We take care of each other. Years ago, I, had, I, I did a class for transit, for transit operators, and they asked me this question. Why is it that people on, my bu on buses videotape the transit operator being assaulted instead of calling 911 or jumping in? Is that a pretty important question? And I said, I know the answer. The answer is simple. They're not your people, and they don't think of you as their bus driver. Because I'm telling you, in, 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 you know, the, the worst bus route in, in America, if those people think of you as their bus driver, and you every single morning say, good morning, you, you, you wait for them to get on a bus, you treat them with dignity, show them respect, guess what? They're going to take care of you. And if you don't, you kind of sit there and growl at them, guess what? No relationship. Relationships are everything. We want to develop a relationship between us and the community. It's a huge point. Okay. Okay. The next thing we want to talk about is that we want to we do, we practice what's called emotionally safe performance-driven instruction. We did it already by having drills. How many of you went to have gone to a class where they talked to you for about two hours, four hours, eight hours, just sat there and took it in? Okay. What we do is we want to get people engaged. So what we do is we actually generate this engagement. This is Colin Hahn. He's, a, he's an industrial, uh, and, uh, instructional designer, and he's talking about what Vistlar does. Suppose you want to train your department in a new skill. You could just lecture them, but you know there must be a better way. How should you train adults? A quick internet search will show that there's a ton of research on adult learning, but what's most important? The Vistlar group has boiled it down to three keys. First, adults want to be engaged. Use small groups, discussions, 
and simulations to create active learning experiences. Second, adults want to use their experience, discover their knowledge, and help their students apply those skills to new situations. Third, adults want feedback, give them opportunities to practice and coach them so they feel confident using their new skills. Engagement, experience, and feedback. When you build your training around these principles, you'll have better outcomes and happier students. That's why the discipline group has developed our performance-driven instruction method. We use a variety of activities to promote collaboration and practice with real-world situations. As a result, our participants have better outcomes, more confidence in their skills, and immediate success in challenging situations. This level, training to address the spectrum of human conflict. What we have, very simply here, is, is a concept of we do fire drills, not fire talks. If you just do fire talks, what could happen in a real fire? Disaster. Disaster. People can die. If you just he hear about talking nice to people, what should you do if somebody talks, you know, gets in your face and yells upset at you? Just be nice to them. How's that working for you, just if you haven't practiced? So we have to practice fire drills. We have to practice communicating under pressure. That's what we do in our classes. But also we have, to, we have to be able to deal with the third concept, and that is something called the communication under pressure card. You have, you have a copy of it in front of you. In front are the, are the 10 components of our training. On the back of it are our tactics. And what this does, very simply, it allows you to see what we're going to do. Jared O'Dea is one of our uh, instructors from Great Britain, you can tell by his accent, but also you know, by, his, uh, by his spelling of some of his words. But he's going to take you through three minutes and talk to you what the whole program is about. This is Communicating Under Pressure, the cup card. Hi, it's Jared O'D here from Dynamis, and today I'm going to take you through our tactics for communicating under pressure. First of all, we recommend that your staff have pre-planned practice responses in place based on mental models that they have for difficult scenarios that they may face in their work. And that will allow them to respond professionally if those situations actually happen. <coughs> then at the core of our method is a philosophy about interacting with others, which creates a supportive atmosphere for minimizing conflict. And our five maxims reflect this platinum principle of always treating everyone the way you'd like to be treated in identical circumstances. Fueling our interaction is the Showtime concept, which is all about activating a composed and professional outlook and performing at our best, regardless of the situation. But how do you start in a positive way? So beginning our interactions with people consistently and in a way which creates a supportive atmosphere means answering their key questions about the interaction up front. And then we can positively move towards solutions by allowing people to fully express the root causes of their problems. And when they open up uh, and offer us this information and that honesty, we can harness it to resolve their situation. However, along the way, staff might need to keep on track despite verbal aggression or insults and abusive behavior and language from the people they're dealing with. Or they'll meet difficult people who will resist uh, doing what they're being asked or what needs to be done. And they'll need to be carefully influenced and guided towards collaboration, cooperation, or even compliance. Our staff are going to need to be persuasive. And sometimes, despite our best efforts, the situation will deteriorate beyond the point where it's safe or perhaps even there will be a situation where one of the people involved will start to behave in a way that they might regret later. In either situation, people need to know what to do. In the end, of course, if we can use the learning points from any given scenario to improve future performance, then that would be beneficial for everybody involved. So those 10 ideas form the basis of our communicating under pressure tactics and uh, it underlines all of our practice and our advice as trainers. Thanks for listening. Hope to speak to you soon. Now that was Gerard D from Great Britain. And what, he, what he's really talking about is this communication under pressure card. 
And we're talking about 10 different concepts that we train as part. These are all activities that are trained as part of the program that we're going to share with you and you're going to have to do some of them today because I want you to take some stuff away from you now. You already have the universal greeting. On a good day, you do it. On a bad day, you also need to do it. Now, we're going to start out with, with the first one we're going to start out with, and on the back are the tactics. We're going to start out with understanding this concept, that the purpose of professional intervention is we now call GVC 3.0. If you had this 10 years ago in this class, you'd have said, the purpose of professional intervention is to generate voluntary compliance. Well, that's true. On a bad day, we'll take compliance. But wouldn't you like to get cooperation? from the community you serve? Wouldn't you like the good collaboration, working together to solve problems? So that's what we're working for now. We've changed it. It's called GVC 3.0. Now, for the, when later on when uh, Kevin hands out those information sheets that he's gonna hand out to ask questions, if you put your email address there, I'll send you to PowerPoint. So it's just something we want you to think about it. Now, Here's the biggest thing, we forget this sometimes when we're up to our neck in the swamp on a bad day, is what, is what is our service to the community? And really, these are called the railroad tracks of common sense and decency. Now let me ask you a question, Depend unless you work in a really rough neighborhood, are most of the people most of the time you deal with on the railroad tracks of common sense and decency? The ones you deal with on a regular basis. You know, you just walk down the street, you're, I mean, they're on the com railroad track of common sense and decency. But unfortunately, our job is, is to meet and greet people. They fall off. <laughs> We're there to meet and greet them. Now, if we can, do we want to get them back up? Okay, and just we'll move on away. You're at a domestic. You're at a traffic stop where someone's argumentative. You're a suspicious person who's called, but it's, it's no, no actions needed. We just want to get them back going along the way. Now, they may be angry when we first get there, but we want to bring them down. Okay, but also sometimes we have to take them to jail. <laughs> sometimes we have to take them to the hospital, to mental health, to detox. But it's our job to meet and greet people. We are the meet and greeters of society. People don't call us when things are going well. They talk, call us when they're falling apart. We have to be ready to, to, to do our job. And our job is to think for them, is to think for themselves 48 to 72 hours later. When we're not in such a bad place, we're not intoxicated, we're not high on drugs, we're not having a bad mental health incident. We want, that's when we want to be able to deal with them. Now, to do this, we have 10 parts of the cup card. If you look at the front of the cup card, you'll see the, out, around the outside of it is the be alert, decisive, respond, don't react. Now, in the state of Wisconsin, we've, we've uh, addressed a lot of our training is based on Caliber Press, Street Survival. And this is out of, out of the early 80s as they talked about this, that we, this is still part of our training. That to do things right, you have to remain alert, be decisive, and have a pre-planned practice response in mind. Anybody ever hear that before? You probably did. <laughs> okay? If we're not paying attention, we're never going to see it coming. If we aren't decisive, we aren't going to make the right decision at the right time. And if we don't have a pre-planned practice response, we're not going to do well. Now, here's the issue. In DAT and in POSC, in the state of Wisconsin, we've done a good job of dealing with the, with the physical. In PCS, we started developing the verbal. But we have to work more on this verbal because we've not done a lot of work on this. Now, let me show why, tell you why this is important. If you look at FBI stats, 98% of all police contacts are resolved verbally. Only 2% or less are resolved physically. Where do we spend most of our time? In training? The criticality. And I understand this, but we also have to deal with the frequency. We need to spend more time on verbal skills. Okay? Now, you've all seen this before in the state of Wisconsin, if you're from here and most places around the country is that we talk about color codes. You have to, have to be in, in condition yellow, relaxed but alert. If something is happening, you focus on it, you get to condition orange, and if necessary, you go to condition red. Here's the problem. You can't afford to be in condition white, not paying attention, and you've got to know when to make a decision, because otherwise you're going to end up in condition black. Blind panic, where you either freeze up or freak out. Now, we talk a lot in our training about distances, and we talk about the 10-5-2 rule. So if I'm moving forward, I'm moving towards that Diane. At 10 feet, as I start moving in, I start making eye contact. They start looking at my face. Tell me how this conversation is going to end. Probably not well. <laughs> okay. So if I'm going to have my if I'm going to have my pleasant face on, right here, she's already making decisions about me. 
As I move closer, I start communicating. Good morning, my name is Deputy Klug, it's Mark County Sheriff. The reason I'm here, now as I get closer, I'm gonna get some ID from her. I'm gonna, you know, I, I, I may have to go into a stop and frisk. I'm gonna have to make decisions about that. So I have to control distance. Now it's both mine and theirs. Kevin, help me here. Start walking towards me. If Kevin's coming towards me, do I have to make decisions? Safe, not safe. Stop, don't stop. Keep coming, keep going. I mean, whoa, 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 whoa. disengage or fight. Do, do, you see, I have to make decisions there. Thank you. Okay, now. I have to position myself right. If I walk up to a normal person, if we were standing with Diane right here, and I was right like this, this is real uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Here's more comfortable. <laughs> okay, just a little bit to the side. How we position ourselves is everything. Now here's an activity we want to do because I want to take this with you. Our problem is that officers don't get this, they forget, and they get in too close, and all of a sudden I get stabbed with the pen. <laughs> because I'm not paying attention, I'm too close. So I have to control distance and I have to use my hands. We call this proxemics. Can we all stand up? Okay, we're gonna learn how to do it now. First of all, just start walking towards me. Stay back! Now again, that was kind of effective, but I mean, this is a normal citizen walking me asking me for directions. Not quite a way to go, but do people get too close? So as people start walking towards me, Sir, can you just stop there? What can I do now? I just need direction. Okay, and did you see, I'm going to learn what we call the stop sign. So, for just standing in our seats, facing me, all I want you to do is do this. Put your hand up and say, Sir, can you stop there? Sir, can you stop there? Face me, face me, face me, face me, face me, so I'm, I'm, I'm the guy. Okay, could you stop there? Well, what can I do to help? Okay, one more time, go. Could you stop there? Stop there. Okay. Now, again, nobody said, could you stop there? What can I do to help? No, 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 it's inappropriate, okay? One more time. Could you stop there? Yeah. What can it help? Now, most officers prefer their hands up here with their strong side back, because it helps you engage guns <laughs> and stuff, but also it helps you block. So keeping the hands up, one more time, and say stop. Could you stop there? Stop what can I do to help? Now, if, if I did this right before the fight started, would this look good on camera? Now, am I still being safe? And I'm not going to overreact to you. I'm just being safe. And if you don't stop, we're going to have to either get out of Dodge or stop you. Okay? Now, the next one is very important. I want you all to work with me on this for really quick, okay? Well, you okay? I want you all to put your hands up. I'm worried about somebody. Put, you're worried about them. Now, they, now they're talking to you. And then, and then, and then. Okay, now do what you usually do. Come on, come on. Work with me on this. Come on. Come on. Come on, help me. Come beat me real. Now, am I in a, in a vulnerable spot here? Because I can't keep this forever. So I'm going to give you, if you know, if, if you know anything about, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. do the thinker stance. Ready? Ready? Go. Okay? Okay? Really. Tell me. Really. Say it. Really. 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 Well, then what happened? Well, okay? Oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> wow. Now, I want, you, I want you to move your hands a little bit because I want to have my hands here because I'm ready to block or engage weapon systems, but can I do this forever? I can hold this forever. I, I, I know, I've tried. <laughs> I can sleep this way. But am I safer this way? Okay? Now the final one, they're coming at you kind of strong, okay? Can we come up? Sir, you just stop there. Just stop, 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 stop. stop. Now, what can I do to help? Now, this is, you, you've all seen this before out of POSC and DAT, okay, our defensive tax system, reverse yelling. Okay, I want you to help me on this one. I want you to yell at me. Just start yelling, go. What's wrong with you? Take it easy, take it easy. Come on, keep yelling. Hey, hey, just, 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 I don't want you to get out of my backyard. It's, it's okay. All you cops oh, come. I got that. <laughs> If you if we had practice reverse, am I looking good? Now this guy doesn't. He goes after me. Am I looking good? Just relax. Take it easy. It's going to be okay. Now work with me. I'm ready. Ready. Go. Your hands are up. Now just relax. No, it's soft. It's soft. It's soft. Just relax. Take it easy. It's going to be okay. Okay. Well, now tell me what's going on. Now do you, do you understand? Am I looking good? Am I ready to defend myself? Am I bringing him down? We've learned that acting research that whatever you give out gets returned to you three times the intensity. Okay, I give out, I give out, I, I anger, I get anger three times the density. I give, I give out nothing, I suck the energy out of them. It's like, and like, what's happening to me? It's like the witch. And the Wizard of Oz with water pouring on it. They, they, they just shrivel up. Is that good for me? Okay, the final one is guiding hands. Okay, you, you're escorting somebody, come here. Okay, sir, can you just step this way? Am I ready to get punched? 
Am I, am I, I'm ready by looking good. <laughs> I'm looking good all the time, thinking, why am I smiling? I know how this is going to end. You see? Now, is that important? Okay, in terms of understanding how to control people, how to stay safe and close. Okay, the next point, if you have a seat, everyone, is called the five maxims. The five maxims are our philosophy. They're on the back of your card. You can just turn it over. They're on the back of your card. And again, we always ask this question. We do, we do a basic class, and this time we ask this question of you. I'm, I want to do a social contract with you. A little expectation contracting. Okay? Do we agree in this class that we are all going to treat each other with dignity and show each other respect, even though we disagree? Can we agree to that? Can I have a thumbs up? Now, I make people give a thumbs up. I got to have a thumbs up, or they can't stay. Thank you. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you looking over there? Get. Okay, now, now, the whole point, though, is that, is that this is the basis of everything we do. This is unconditional. If somebody gets in your face and starts swearing at you, say, sir, I can appreciate the fact you're angry. Under the same circumstance, I can be angry, too. But I'm asking you not to swear at me. Sir, sir, I'm going to treat you with dignity and show you respect, no matter what. I ask the same of you. Is that a powerful statement? Now, am, am, I, be, if I, am I being safe doing this? Because I'm getting ready, if I have to, to do you. Because I always have plans B, C, D, and F already. But I'm looking good. Okay, but that's, that's our, you know, the number one thing we do. Now, here's something we've learned. We spend a lot of time on doing how people are different. Okay, now it's important to understand that we have different cultures, races, we have different religions, we have different uh, you know, sex and sexualities, we have different socioeconomic conditions, we have different, different ec uh, educational levels, right? But there are five ways that all people are the same, and we want to focus on them. Because I may not know where you're coming from initially, because remember, I'm walking up to you, 10, 5, 2, it's kind of hard to make all these decisions, you may not be obvious. But if I treat with these five things, I'm going to keep everyone safer. I'm going to be more efficient, effective, and I'm going to look great on camera. Okay? Now, this is not only our philosophy, it's also our tactic. And really, what we're, what we're talking about is following the platinum rule. Treat people like you like to be treated under identical circumstances. If I was drunk and disorderly in the booking room, how would I want my to be treated? How would I want my family to be treated? That's how we treat other people. Now, to do this, first of all, we listen with all our senses. We have to listen to people. Not only what we see and hear, but what, what I smell. Alcohol. They're a smoker. I'm, I'm getting all kinds of intel here. Okay? So the point I have to look at all those things. If I, if I, have, I have my hand up, may I touch your arm? If I'm, if I'm escorting you and all of a sudden you start tensing up, am I going to feel that? Okay, I'm going to feel these things. So I want to know that. I have to listen with all my senses. Okay? Secondly, I'm going to have to ask and not tell. This is hard because we like to give orders. Step out of your car. Or we, or we hide in a question. Sir, may I ask you to step out of your car? <laughs> it's still an order. Okay? Whenever we can, we should ask. It's a sign of respect. My, my daughter is a special needs instructor. She's a VDI instructor. And she likes to say this. She, she's a special needs teacher. She says, when you don't ask kids to, what, to do something, you're denying their existence. Sit, roll over, bark. I'm not a dog. So when I ask somebody, you know, we're going to get to telling, okay? But start with asking. Is, does it look better? So could I ask you to step out of your car? Now, if I got to drag you out of that car later, guess what? It helps. I started asking. It's got to sound like an ass. So could somebody ask, could I ask you to step out of your car? It's, it's to sound that way. Okay? Now, I have to explain why. We don't like doing this. Why? We don't tell people why they fill in the blanks. Whether it's a special needs kid, my daughter always says this, or as an adult, if I don't tell you why I'm asking you, guess what? You start thinking why. You don't like me because I'm this, I'm that, I'm this and that. No, I have to tell you why I'm, I want you to do something. It's a great thing to do, and it gives power and shows respect. The third thing is we have to, we, we, I mean, the, the fourth thing is we have, to, we have to give options. You know, don't be threatening people. We, I, I, you're, not, you're going to jail. I got that part. Okay, well, sir, I want you to get home tonight. I want you to sleep in your bed tonight. I want you, you know, I, I want you, you know, get, get up and have breakfast with your family. Go to work tomorrow. But, sir, if you don't go, unfortunately, you're going to go to jail. You're going to sleep with us, eat with us, bad sandwiches. In the morning, you're going to go to, you're not going to be, you're not going to get out of court until after, you know, you've been late for work. Will you work with me? 
But see, you give them choices. You show them, People always have choices to do it or don't, don't they? I want to give them some good choices. And then finally, I want to give people a second chance. Now let me ask you one question here. Would any, of you, would any of you be in this room today, doing what you're doing today, if someone along the way didn't give you a second chance? Think of all the things that we would have done in your lives that could have turned really different. Okay, so we give people a second chance and we can. Now we're going to deal with safety issues. There's some safety issues. That there, there, sometimes there's no listening, there's no asking, no explaining why, no offer options, no second chance. We got to take immediate action. Got that. But when we can, are we looking good? We're effective, but we look good on camera. We want to be. So those are the five maxims. Now, one of the biggest things here is that if you ever get, ever, uh, you know, you get a complaint against you, we call it getting get, get in a beef, it's a great way to defend your actions. Hey, Sarge, I started out with a universal greeting. I, I asked him some questions. I listened to what he had to say. I, you know, I, I told him why. I gave him some options. I gave him a second chance to think about it. And then I did what I did. Is that not a great defense of what you did when you do it? Now remember also, you know, and I'm going to tell you the truth. Over time, everybody you know, you know, has been involved in this situation. We've seen people lie. Okay? You can't lie anymore because it's going to be on film. It's going to be on that ca camera in a cold circuit television. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be on, your, on, on, a, on an iPhone. It's going to be on a, your own body camera. It's going to be there. <laughs> so let's just do it right. This is our philosophy. Now, the next concept is called, it's called showtime. We have to maintain our emotional equilibrium. Do people try to attack us verbally to try to get, get us angry? You know, we're a person in authority. People do that. Now again, I don't care if you're a teacher, a parent, or a police officer. People do that. So you have to maintain your, 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 you have to your emotional uh, equilibrium. I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? What I, I'm going to show you very simply. So what I want you all to do is just watch for verse. I want to, first of all, I want you to sit up straight. Let's do that. Sit up straight. Now, whether I'm standing or sitting, just sitting up straight, I look different. I breathe different. I'm, I look more assertive. Okay, I want you to say to yourself, showtime. Say it, showtime. Okay, now, what I want you to do is I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose. Pause and out through your mouth. It's called autogenic breathing. It calms you. It's a cleansing breath. Okay, if, I, if you have time for two, take two. <laughs> okay, now, when, 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 after I've done that, after I've done that, we're gonna go, we're gonna go through is I'm gonna put on my professional face. Okay, well, do I need a pleasant face? Or do I need my war face? You know, you, you have different faces you gotta wear for different circumstances. Okay, I'm disciplining my child. That's a different face than you just got a great, great score, score on your, your, uh, uh, your report card. Okay, then I have to use the appropriate self-talk. Now, in street survival, we've always taught people to say, on a high-risk call, I will survive. That's cool, but are some verbal calls high-risk calls? <laughs> in terms of career and longevity on the job? Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to say this. I can handle this. Say it. I can handle this. Okay, that's positive self-talk. Okay, now what I want you to do is everybody stand up. Okay, and we're gonna do this, okay? Now, I could be sitting in my cruiser getting out, I could be getting ready to go out, out of the locker room, I could be, I'm ready to knock on that door. On the way up, I want you to think about this, I'm doing showtime, I'm getting ready for a bad day, because we don't know what's on the other side of that door. So stand up, okay, say to yourself, showtime, breathe. Put on the appropriate face that I need for the job I'm going to do. Okay? I can handle this. I'm ready to step into that arena now. Or have the arena step on top of me. Now, we all have done this probably in our own way. But we, we, we want you to understand, I want to make this very formal. Every high-risk call I'm going on, everything is going to be something serious. I'm going to knock on my boss's door for a, a difficult conversation. I get ready for showtime. Because then I'm not going to get caught out of, off guard. Okay? Grab a seat. With that, this is a natural time for taking a break. Close enough. Close enough for well, government work, okay. All right, now again, I've been here before, so let's just take 10 minutes because you want to get out of here at 12.30. So we got, we got the 24 after, after, after let's say 25.2, let's be ready to rock and roll.